have a part. It shows you are a part of his kingdom. Amen. I was saying uh, uh, John 8, eh? Uh, we are talking about the importance of the word of God uh, in our life. And if you look at what Jesus said, the things we were reading yesterday, the Lord talks about his word and he said it was the truth. So today in this world, as a believer, let me just narrate what is needed for you as a child of God. The moment you become born again, you are a new creation. Hallelujah. It's either you take it or you don't take it. If you don't take it, you're going to struggle. And as I said that the weapon of our warfare, what's happening now in the mind, you are not training your mind to think according to the word of God. And it does not come as easy. Praise God. You have to renew your mind. You have to choose to take the truth and accept the truth. So a born again child of God, the Bible says that if you join yourself to God, you are one spirit with God. You take it or you don't take it. Once you take it, you believe it. And when the enemy comes and lies to you, you rebuke him because you are one spirit with God. Hallelujah. So what God revealed to my heart is that many, many, many of us or many Christians, they, they just are struggling to take the victorious life in Christ. So we have believed, many of us, we are under deception. We believe a lie. Hallelujah. We believe a lie. And that's the reason why we are struggling and we have no life. The life of Christ is not being manifested in our lives. We are truly Christian. It's not that you receive more, more light than anyone. The Bible says God does not give his spirit by measure. Meaning that you have the fullness of the spirit. It says the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is inside of every believer. It is the spirit of power. But you know how do you bring out the power of God? You bring it out through faith. You must believe the truth for the truth to work. Amen. John 8 verse 31 there. It says, Jesus said to, this, to, to the people who believe. In him so he was talking to people that believed in him hallelujah so he's talking to you and I amen <clears throat> you are truly my disciple if you remain faithful to my teachings in the new King James or King James it would say if you abide in my word Hallelujah. Indeed, you are my disciple if you continue in my word, if you continue in my teachings. He was talking to the people that already believed in him. They knew he was the Messiah. They knew he was the Christ, their Savior. But he affirmed and, 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 told, and told them that, you know what? I see you believe in me. But you are indeed what mark you that you are a true disciple of Jesus is your abiding in his word when you continue to do his word. Many people are Christians, but they are not doers of the word, meaning they are not disciples. Hallelujah. This is the Lord speaking to us. He's telling us the things that are important. The things that matters. Hallelujah. And so he's saying, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Where are you going to get the truth? From the Bible, from the word of God. As we read yesterday, I want to read it again. In um, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 10. Three them. Talking about spiritual warfare, and this is the fight we are up against. 
spiritual warfare. Everyone is talking about spiritual warfare. Hallelujah. Everyone is talking about spirits and powers that are against them. Everyone is talking about oppression. Let, let, listen to me, brethren. Let me tell you, God teach people. You hear that? God is the teacher of mankind. But you will never be taught by God if you don't read the Bible. He teaches you as you read the Bible. And he impart understanding in you as you read the word, his word. If you don't make time to read the Bible, if you don't make time to bombard your spirit with the truth, you will live in a lie. It doesn't matter how many degrees of education, of earthly education you have. There is what you call spiritual understanding. Hallelujah. Spiritual understanding, it is the teachings that you receive, the way the Holy Spirit teaches you, the things of God. The Bible says He shows you, or He teaches you, or He shows you things, or He reveals to you things that are freely given unto you. Hallelujah. So we're talking about spiritual warfare. That though we are in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. But what do we do? It says, though we walk, verse 3, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. For the pulling down stronghold. Stronghold. Patterns of thoughts. Strongholds are, it, it's, it's thoughts, patterns, the way you see things, the way things, it's like, it's, a, it's, 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 part, it's imagination. Praise God. It's patterns of thoughts. How are you going to pull them down? The Bible says they are mighty in God. Weapons that are mighty in God to the pulling down of stronghold, meaning that the pattern, the way you think that is not according to God can be taken down by the truth. Because it says, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is the truth. How are you going to be sanctified? It says, make them holy. In the New Living Translation, it says, make them holy. Meaning the word of God sets you apart. Listen, as I said last night, that you can try to be delivered all your life if you want. My dear, if that's what you choose, you live an ignorant life. Because you need to accept the truth that I'm a new creation. I am not cursed. I am blessed. Some people say the sins of your father, but the same Bible says that we will no more be judged by the sins of our fathers. That's scripture. Everyone will be judged for what they have done. And that's why it says, if any man be in Christ, is a new creation. You are a new creation. That's what God said of you. And God, want, it, it will please God when you accept what he says of you. Because there is no way that we walk in circles and there's no victory. Circles after circles after circles of defeat. It's just a circle of demon. No, no, no. Somehow we have not taken the truth. It cannot be that this is the life that God came to give us when he came from heaven. I read in John 10.10, 10, it says he came to give us abundant life. Somehow we got it twisted. Somehow we are not, ex we are not in the truth. Because in the truth it says, I have come to give them life so they can have it in abundance. A victorious life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, it is taking time in the word of God and allow God to, 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 to learn you, to relearn. You need to relearn. 
and take the truth and jump into the truth and walk in the power of the truth, renewing your mind with the truth of the word of God. Because the word of God is the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Knowing who you are in Christ, your identity as a believer, the power that has been delivered unto you, what that power you can do with it, it's all written in the word. Hallelujah. It is not true that the believer will confess a case. Even the Israelites who were in the old covenant were blessed. Balaam could not curse them. Because he said, behold, I cannot curse which is, which the people that are blessed. Whereas us in the new covenant, where we are told we are a new creation, all the things has passed away. Behold, all things are new. Yet we are still confessing curses because we have not accepted the truth. It's period. It's like that. And God is talking. He is tired of looking at his children defeated because we do not want to accept the truth and we do not want to act by faith. We want to act by sight. We want to live in the realm of the flesh. And because we live in the realm of the flesh, we cannot be victorious. Hallelujah. The Bible says we are able to destroy stronghold in our minds. Beliefs, wrong beliefs, we are able to destroy them. You can adapt. That's why it says, do not be conformed to the standard of this world, to the patterns of this world, to the way this world sees things, to the way this world thinks, but be renewed. But, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Meaning your mind can be renewed. The power, the word of God is the power to renew your thinking. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. For the weapon of our warfare are not kind of mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, beliefs, deception, casting down arguments. Hallelujah. When God is speaking or you desire something certain, say the God didn't give it to you. Arguments. They are arguing in your minds. The Bible, listen, God does not, it's not hard. You say that people don't get this thing. It's not hard. It's, com it's, it's committing yourself to the word and bombarding your spirit with the word of God to give birth to transformation. Are you hearing that? Listen, don't blame anyone when you are a child of God and you are under stress. It's not demon's problem. It's your problem. Because stress cannot live in the environment where the word of God is active and alive. Because as you are reading the word of God, God is also speaking to you every moment and every corner. The word will keep talking to you. Meditation will become automatic. Hallelujah. Praise God. The word of God gives us sight. We begin to see and understand we begin to gain spiritual understanding. We begin to have the upper hand over the enemy. And it also gives birth to faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. As you are bombarding yourself with the word of God, faith is coming to you like spontaneous. It will come to you. Because faith cometh by hearing the word of God. You don't produce it by yourself. It comes by hearing the word of God. Some people say, I lack faith. You lack the word. Because if you get faith, if you, if you have the word, faith is spontaneously. It, 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 is, it is a child of the word. It's a product of the word of God in our spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Casting down argument and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Whatsoever it is of a lie, what is of, whatsoever it is of, of deception, we are able to cast it down. Hallelujah. 
God has not left us as often, the word of God says. We are not orphans. He gave us everything and he equipped us with so much power. He gave us the word. He gave us the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So those strongholds that tells you are case, you need to accept the truth. Hallelujah. So the fight is really, what Satan is really fighting, he does not want you to believe the truth. The fight is against the truth. He wants you to, to remain in a lie. And as long as you are in a lie, he has an upper hand over you. He has deceived you. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. So what set us free is the truth. Where do I get the truth? From the word of God. You have eyes. Read the Bible. If you don't make that daily commitment, you will struggle. All of us will struggle, including me. All men will struggle. Absent the word of God, they struggle. That's what the Bible said. Men shall not live on bread alone, but on every word of God that proceeds from the mouth of God. We like, Satan is also angry, and Satan is tired. We like to accuse these demons. We like to accuse these demons. Christians, we're supposed to live a victorious life. We are, how did demons get excel? Because we neglect the things that were delivered unto us. Jesus says, Satan is nothing in me. You will not have the power to overcome the evil one if you don't study the Bible. Because when he comes and lies to you, like the day he lied to Eve, Eve fought for a trip from the trap of the enemy, and the enemy came in. Eve did not quote the Bible against Satan. Satan is the one who came to quoting the Bible. And it was not even real. He quoted twisting it because Eve did not know the word. He believed. Isn't it like us with us? He. Eve did not know the Bible. So Satan came with something like a scripture to twist it. He came with his own fabricated truth that was not the truth. And he gave it to Eve. Because Eve was not acquainted in the word, what happened? He believed it. She believed it and therefore, today, we are still, the people, we are still suffering from that problem. The same Satan came to Jesus. Jesus knew the word. He did not say much things. He didn't even say, I am Jesus. I am the son of God. Hey, some people like to call to their own identity. Hey, I am the son of God. I am a, a, a daughter of prophet Elijah. Those that are children of the prophet of these days, they call to their prophet and they say, I am the father, I am the daughter of prophet who, 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 prophet Elijah. We are the Namibia, the demon destroyer of Namibia. Jesus didn't say that, though he was the son of God. What did Jesus say? It is written. Teaching us that there is power in the word of God. He hit down the devil and the Bible said Satan left him. What did he do? He coded the word. He uses the word as a defense mechanism. Hallelujah. God showing to us that when you are filled with the word of God, when the enemy comes in, you just use the word to shield him. To put a shield between him and him. Hallelujah. You stand in the power of that word for the word of God does not fail. Praise God. So this is why many, many, many of us because we lack the word. There is something we lack. The word of God in our spirit. We lack it. We know verses, but we don't have the word. Verses is just those things we pick. The word is like you have the counsel of God. 
And wherever you go, the word will be talking to you. When someone makes you angry, the word will say that forgive them. And he will give you a scripture in the Bible. It will jump into your mind and it will tell you, just leave it. Don't revive evil for evil. Don't return evil for evil. Then you are already working. We are already doing things accordingly. Praise God. When he says that, love your enemy. You came in the face of your enemy. And then because the word of God is in you, that's why it says, sanctify them. Make them holy by your word. Now when I see my enemy and all they ask me bread and I give them even two bread, I'm acting upon the word of God. And I'm being holy like that. But when you lack that word in your spirit, see, the word doesn't only come alone, it comes with power. Because then that truth is imparted unto you. Then when you when, when you when you might know the scripture, but you have no power to obey. What does the Bible say? It says the word of God is what? It's living. Sharper than a two-edged sword. It's quick. And it is living. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That's what we need, many of us. We need to go back to the word of God. To study it. So that we can be wise. So that we can be empowered, equipped in these last days. So that our faith will not fail. So that our faith will stand the test of time. When you don't have faith, you are finished. When someone comes and attacks you, what do you have when you don't have faith? The Bible says, put the shield of faith in Ezekiel in, in, in Ephesians 6, which is able to quench the fairy darts of the enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And that faith comes from the word of God. It's not that me I'm born again. That's not faith. Faith is a knowing of the truth. In that very situation, what is God saying? If you receive the word from God, that situation, you have already overcome it. But many of us, we are under the weather. We are not fighting. The Bible says, fight the fight of faith. Hallelujah. We are not fighting. We have allowed Satan to rule over our lives. It seems that we have received a small power. Other people have received more power. The Bible says, we are the same Holy Spirit that is in Jesus is the same that is in us. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Jesus knew the word of God. The Bible says the Pharisee was so amazed by his knowledge of the word. Yet he was the son of God. Then they said, how did this one knew the scripture when he did not even learn, when he didn't go to school? Meaning Jesus was a well learned in scripture. Was very, very well learned in scripture. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. You can go from house to house, church to church, looking for deliverance. If you don't eat them, listen, the moment you become born again, there is something you eat, my dear. The word of God is your food. You can go house to house, church to church. You can travel out. You can come back. You can do what? The thing you need is the word. Hallelujah. The thing you need is the word of God. Why do you think God hates you? That you are not getting delivered. No. God doesn't hate you. The Bible says God does not desire any of us to perish. Once, listen, you are not reading the Bible like a kakokateo. You are reading to act upon it. You are believing the truth that is there. And you are enforcing that truth in your life. That's how you see changes. Do you hear what I'm saying? What I'm saying is this. When I see that you say I'm a new creation, the enemy will come and accuse me and say, look at you. Tare nyo pate na amukesho mwuringe. Tare nguza kukukukwe, na memewe, na angu na angu. 
you are going to tell him, I am a new creation. That's how you cut him off. Because he's accusing you. The Bible says he's an accuser of brethren. So he's always busy accusing people. For you, you now have to stand and say, no. The word of God says, I am a new creation. All things, as if he's reminding you of your old sin, of your past sin, you tell him, Jesus has sanctified me. I'm a new creation. My sins have been washed away. Because Satan will always bring up your old sin. Even when you were five years, he will bring it up. But he said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. New creation. Everything of that man that happened before they became child of God, canceled out. Amen. Now the fight is here. The enemy will come and remind you. You now have to stand and say, No, I am a new creation. I refuse to accept your lies. Amen. That's what we are talking about, the fight. Praise God. Amen. That's really the, what the fight is. It's a fight against the truth. It won't take long if you can just take the way you read the Bible. Commit yourself to a daily reading of the scripture and a daily prayer. You need that, my brethren. For you to stay alive, you need that. I don't mean for you to stay alive, meaning alive like dying. I just mean that if you want to keep yourself alive in the spirit, you have to read the Bible daily and pray daily to God. Because now you are a spiritual person. And because you are a spiritual person, you eat food. Just like you feed your natural body, your spiritual body also needs to eat. The food your spiritual body eats is the Bible, is the word of God. The Bible said the word of God is food unto our spirit. Hallelujah. And it said it is health unto our all flesh. Mental, your mental, yeah. If you continue to read the Bible, that mental problem will disappear. That, all of the sudden, depression that comes, that heavy, that heaviness that comes upon you, it cannot penetrate because when the light shines, darkness cannot, darkness cannot comprehend. Meaning that we are ready to say, I'm going to take up. Hallelujah. I'm going to take up. Shake it to make a quick giving over to God. You give yourself entirely to God. And then you realize that when I'm in this world, I'm only here to serve God. I'm only here to live for God. Because no more to live for myself, but now to live for Him. Therefore, He desired me to learn His weight. He desired me to live for him. Then I make a decision to put God first above any other thing in this world. To commit myself to fellowship with him. Where Jesus said, when you pray, shut your door. Meaning be alone and pray to your father who is in secret and he will reward you openly. Hallelujah. You are only here to glorify one man and one man alone. His name is Jesus Christ. The life we now live is no more ours. That's 2 Corinthians again, 5 verse 15 there. I will read it today in New King James. It says, He died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Meaning that the moment I became born again, it's no more my life. This life belongs to God. I don't live for myself anymore. I have not to reckon myself that this life is no more mine. I live to glorify God. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
some if you are in this life called newborn again and you are there and you are trying to live out your life some people are in this life and they are only looking for God to bless them hey you will not enjoy the life seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and it's going to add the things we need we need to kill our desire our worldly desire to maharonge ya ka ha kutseka maharonge ya ka ha kumonika maharonge ya kuishita o maharage kengo they have to die because they don't glorify Jesus because also maharonge no wo ku glorifying ongo wa kala umonike not to Jesus if you read in the book of Isaiah 6 quickly There's a scenario that I just want to draw here. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Verse two. Above it stood seraphim, each had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. With two he cover I mean with two he flew. And one cried to another said, "Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, and the whole earth is full of his glory." Listen to this. These are the seraphim. These are the angels that are at the throne. Praise God. But remember, they are beautiful. But it says with two wings they cover their face. Why would they cover their face? Because they are not the one to receive the glory, but God. They are close to God. They are beautiful. God has made them very beautiful. But with two they cover their face. Why? because they want God to be the one to receive glory and not them. Hallelujah. Praise God. It says it it is I just want to read it again. Above it stood the stood seraphim each one had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. and with two he flew and one cried to another and said holy holy is the lord you see they were doing what worshiping god they were just giving god the glory if all of us are made beautiful you come here say i come in the name of jesus but bro you really want to show that me first jesus behind do you see what i'm saying This one were close to God but they covered their face and they gave glory to God though they were the one who were moving because they got feet but yet they covered it they just wanted to give up God all the glory showing that this is the character this is what we need to carry in our lives humility 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 bring us close to God Amen. So I just wanted to speak that. And um again I just wanted to echo this because I really feel so much fire on it that God wants us to accept the truth. Accept what is written. That is your truth. Many of us I'm speaking these things but you are not hearing what I'm saying and you want a change how Praise God If God says that Satan is no more dominion over you you need to believe that and accept that that you are getting empowered like that when he comes you tell him you have no right no power over me any longer that's how you talk to him because god said it god who cannot lie said it 
Corinthian, uh, not Corinthian, but Colossians 1 9. power of darkness he has delivered us see that God is the word of God is speaking to us he has delivered us he has done it already from the power of darkness another translation will say from the dominion see when Christ came into our life he came to deliver us from the dominion from the control of Satan so much more that the enemy must no more control your mind. You must withstand him with the truth. Hallelujah. You must do what? Withstand him with the truth. It is he has delivered us from the power of darkness and convey, meaning translated us into the kingdom of his son. In whom we have redemption, mutuna e kupito. Through kupitira mombizie, ne dimi ne po John Jodetu. Amen. He has what transferred us. Oto ngo wa ngo wa transfer kwa moro ngo kwa mbo. To transfer mo vendo. Ori shego vendo kwa. Ori shego kwa mbo. You've come here. Meaning now, I, now you need to take the reality of this word. The oil happened in Okaishi philosophy. This is reality. This is spiritual reality. Hallelujah. To a child of God that is born again, you are being transferred. You have moved from one kingdom to another. Therefore now, you need to resist the lies of Satan who says that you are mine, who says that I will oppress you, who says that I will do this to you. You have to resist him with what? With the truth. I have been delivered from your dominion, from your control. I have been transferred into the kingdom of God. Meaning your right has been broken over me. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's as simple as that. You fight him with the truth. You fight him with the truth. Jesus fought him with the truth. If you think he's just going to pray, pray empty prayers. Jesus didn't talk to the devil with empty prayers. You use the word. Because the word is a sword. Hallelujah. You use the sword to slay the enemy. Praise God. So your words are meat and not powerful. It's the word of God that is powerful. The Bible says it's sharper than a two-edged sword. It's so sharp. Now, you, now when you pray, you have to believe that I'm speaking sharp words here. I'm speaking, I'm using a sword here. Hallelujah. Praise God. The word of God has got an upper hand in the spirit realm. The Bible said the entrance of his word is light. So when the word is entering, light is coming there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. No more accepting defeat. Take the truth. Run with the truth. Believe the truth. The truth is above all. Amen. The truth is above all. The truth is above the lies. Hallelujah. God does not want his children anymore to be, to, to be tormented by demons. No. No. How can you be tormented to something that you are more powerful than it is? Meaning they are using what? Deception. To capture us. As long as we believe a lie, he's a manipulator. As long as he's manipulating you to make you believe that he is more powerful. He is not powerful because Jesus, the Bible said, we have been seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. Far above powers, principalities, and dominion. Where did I get that? From the Bible. So when I understood that I am seated with Christ, I realized that I'm more powerful than these things. Amen. Hallelujah. 
I'm a child of God. The Bible says that who is from above is above all. And I am from above. The Bible teaches me I am from above. I am from above. I read it way in the book of John. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Quickly, I'll read it for you quickly then. John, just John the Gospel. The first chapter there. Then I'll close. God wants us to take his truth. The truth of God must not die. If the truth of God dies, then darkness will rule. He will rule our thoughts. Then principality, then argument, the demonic argument and stronghold will rule our life and we are defeated. It is by the truth we are free. Amen. John 1. The Bible says, Hey, just I just want to read a little bit here. It says verse 4, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. I have Jesus. In him was life. And that life was the light of men. Not the darkness of men. Light. Satan is darkness. Jesus is light. Amen. And then say, And the light shone, and darkness did not comprehend it. And then it says, verse 9, that was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. And then it says, verse, verse 12, but as many as receive him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. Verse 13, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, but of the will of God. I mean, not of the will of men, but of the will of God, meaning that we are in by the will. The moment you become born again, shoop, you are born into the will of God. E, not of the will of men anymore. The moment you become born again, you shoop, you become, you become, you are born now of the will of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And then it says that. I'll, I'll read it to you now. It says, verse 27 there. It says, no, no, not verse 27. But I wanted just to read it with you. Just give me a second. says that one he who comes from above is above all he who is of the earth is earthly and speak of earthly of, of the earth he who comes from heaven is above all and we know that we are above because we came from heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord praise God Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, you have to know that because you are with Christ, you are above. You came from above. And God wants you to accept this truth. Because by accepting it, you become victorious. So, we need to renew our mind and accept the truth of God's word. 
then we are breaking bondages, strongholds, patterns, arguments, imagination that they sold themselves against the truth of God's word. We need to make a step forward of accepting the truth. Blindly you accept the truth and say, this is what God said, this is what I am. Like I was telling you last night of Abraham, he decided, he, he, when God changed the name of Abraham to Abraham, Abraham means father of many. Abraham changed his name without having a child. Because God said, you are, I've made you a father of many. So it means, just let me draw this pattern. You are in the village. You don't have a child. And then you go to a church and a pastor, or maybe in a dream, or somehow God revealed to you that you are now memewa nona. Memewa nona. And now, ongura squashi, otapapis. Nenge magada, ojana ngun, o memewa nona. Uno nona kapa, kinash. Kwati ok seri ma, kurimpaka ishe jedi nano, ina mungu nesh. Keri namo, nsemba namo, gerek. That's how God wants to have that mindset. So she can go quite the Nanga Nando with the Pomba de Petita Pinyang, Nango with the Moku with the Queta Pinyang, Kabungo, what he whom the sun set free is free indeed. Therefore, God wants you to walk in your freedom, regardless of what you are feeling, because you do not walk by sight but by faith. Hallelujah! Praise God! It is after 20 years. That Abraham, the whole time people thought he was crazy. Hallelujah. Meaning that sometimes you have to confess what the word of God says, despite of what you have, because demons use feelings. Satan easily uses feelings. He can't use the heart. Men believe one today. Your heart. Praise God. So sometimes you can even feel. No. What did God say? If God said you are poor, then confess it. But if God said you are blessed, Jesus Christ, the Bible said he became poor so that we can be blessed, rich. So you confess the truth of the word of God. Don't go with feelings. Go with the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. That's faith. That's living in the spirit. That's a high life. Many people, people even force you. If we went up and down, can we have from Jerichan way? It confess the word of God. The Bible says Abraham, I should put on Kurukadi was in Varelo so Sasa. Amen. No son of it, our wrong go. He continued to confess the word of God. Hallelujah. He is a good example of what faith is. No wonder God honored him and gave him a name. That is the father of faith. Who's a good job? On to go a curupa, there's nothing anymore. No good cut away, can I see Varelo, Momo Curupe, but he continued to confess, I am Abraham. Gata de one noise, so Dominica to Moncondamo, or one in Abraham, Kenakana. How can you explain that? That's pure faith, and that faith will never fail. Never fail. Hallelujah. Accept the truth. Accept the word of God. Accept your healing. It already happened two years ago. Don't worry about what you are feeling in your body. Amen. The body can lie. The body is not God. The truth is the truth. The truth doesn't lie. God does not lie. Let every man be a liar. And let God be true. Hallelujah. So confess the word of God. Believe what is told. Let's have no compare with So to sanga, to underline, mark those things in your spirit and believe them and run with them. That is your victory. Oh, you sin that no joindo. So so tapu tiku ta. Dino, 
First John, let's read First John quickly. I will finish now. This is my last verse now of the day. Five. Verse four, it says, whatever, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. So when I'm going to Karunga, I am born of God. I'm born again. Do you not accept that? Simple. Accept that you are born of God. Hallelujah. Accept that you are born of God. I am born of because God said it. Amen. No one will know your identity except God told you who you are. Because when we began boiling on Bamba, we were not to change our route. Therefore, now God is talking to us and say, You are now like this, 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 you are now like this. And you are going to say, 